This is one of our most unique guests to date. It is. What what an incredible episode. We record this on a Sunday morning and what a way to start the week. Uh, Sitting down great. with Rabbi Joey Newcomb is just incredible. He He's someone who's exploded in the past two or three years and for good reason we get into what's the secret behind his success in his music and in his Tyra and in his Inyanim, as he says. Definitely a character and a real genuine person. The guy never sat down to compose a song. The songs just come to him when he's just doing regular life things. And before we dive into this episode, we first have a quick word from our friend Shmuel. So we're sitting here with Shmuel Sackett. Shmuel, who you guys have seen in the last couple of episodes in this beautiful million dollar apartment in the heart of Eric Yisrael. He's the man behind the dream raffle. And he wanted to come all the way here <laughs> from, from Eretz Yisrael just to talk a little bit, a little bit how, how it is. And people ask us all the time, can you really win a million dollar apartment? Like, it's a big prize. It's, it's the biggest prize. There is no such raffle like this in the entire Jewish world. And yes, the person who wins gets the keys to the apartment forever. And like, they win, they get a call, they won, they get the keys. That's right. That's amazing. And, and, and it's theirs. It's theirs forever. And... With a view of Harabayit, which by the time this raffle is going to be held, it's going to be a view of the Beit HaMikdash. Ooh, I, I like mean, that. I like actually that. like you got to get up and say like, which way do I dive in Shacharis? Oh, there. Okay, <laughs> it's like there. Um, so it, it is an incredible prize. Uh, it's in the heart of Yerushalayim. It's a gorgeous building, a luxury building. Yes, it's valued at a million dollars. When the Beit HaMikdash will be rebuilt, I think it'll be worth about $10 million. Right. <laughs> yes. yes. But we're not going to ask for uh, additional and money. after the Chiesa Mason, it'll be worth $100 million. <laughs> and people can go ahead and buy a ticket at thedreamraffle.com. Right, thedreamraffle.com. And for every ticket, you know what? For the guys at MPP, I'll tell you what. For the every ticket that you buy, will double your offer. Buy mm, one to wow. give you two, buy five, 10, and so on. And put in code MPP, Meaningful People Podcast. There you go. $10 off an additional. So double your order, $10 off, a million dollar apartment in Shalim, and the money goes to an incredible cause. We're helping Israeli farmers right before Shemitah. We're helping Israeli businesses hit hard by COVID. Tremendous, tremendous cause. And yes, the apartment is yours forever. Guys, go ahead and enter. I know we are. Yeah. And maybe you'll win. This is an incredible episode, guys. Hope you enjoy it. And yeah, enjoy. Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast, the podcast where we talk to people who are... Meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you, Hashem. We have Rabbi Joey <laughs> slash Yosef Newcomb in our studio. <laughs> you don't look like a Joey. No? I don't think so. Like when I think of the name Joey. Do I, I sound like a Joey? I think so. Yeah, you sound like a Joey. <laughs> yeah. You don't look like a Joey, but you sound like one. You sound like one. But we're like grow, growing up, I have a feeling that you were... You were Joey growing up, and then like when you got older, you were like more Yosef. No, it's the opposite. It's really? The exact opposite. Really? Growing up, Yosef, Yosel, oh. Yosef, everything. The time I got to high school, the electric guitar came out. That's when you got cool. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Island coined the nickname. I remember I used, to, I used to sit on the guitar and play for like an hour straight, or more than an hour straight, through Seder, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We used to play heavy, and then the, so this this nickname got coined, Rockstar Joey. Mm. And then that's how it stuck. But we have to be Makadish to Indian, you know? You're saying it's... It's a different beginner. You bring, bring Kedusha to the name. Joey, Joey. started in, in high school, and it stuck. Really? Yeah, it stuck. But you know what? Maybe it's a, maybe it's an Indian of being... I never thought, like, why did I continue calling myself that? I never made a cheshbon about it. It just, just it is became. what it is. People started calling me that, and that's, you know? Right. Well, here's a test. What, what does your wife call you? Yosef. Yosef, okay. And your, parent, your, your kids don't call you... Uh, Joey, <laughs> you're, so, I'm curious. What are you're an Abba? You're a Tati? You're tati, a dad? Tati. You're Tati. My kids do have fun though. Like whenever I pick them up from school, and all the kids are like Joey Nukum. <laughs> so my kids are like Tati's name is Joey Nukum. Like, you know? Is that is that like a more recent thing? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Ever since you know the whole Indian became an the Indian. whole Indian. So what's the Indian? Like what is that? What is that Indian to you? <laughs> to me, that it's an Indian. You know and <laughs> it's not just a, to a lot of people. You'll say it's a business. But to hmm. me, it's an Indian. An Indian means that there's. Something meaningful to it. Meaningful. Oh, there you go. Oh, good plug. <laughs> Push product. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're, both your parents are Bali Chuva. Yeah. Um, did, did you have like a different type of upbringing because of that? Or did it, you grew up in Queens. Yeah. Like what, what type of life did you have as a youngster? Meaning my parents being Bali Chuva, it was, it was, if anything, it was more intense, mm. you know? 
there was no TV. There was no anything. There was no exposure to the outside world. Right. I went to see a Yitzchak here in mm-hmm. Paraguay. Um, every day, driving the Van Wick. <laughs> I could like I have like memories of being nauseous in the car. Just you know? traffic. Just traffic. Just like, <laughs> every single day. Traffic. It's pretty far from Queen State. I mean, it's not so far, but for, for it's not a, so bad. It, it, for it, elementary, at yeah, one o'clock can... in the morning, it's like a twenty minute drive. Right. <laughs> but but we're driving in rush hour both ways. Right. So it ends up being a 45 minute drive to school and back every single day. But it's serious nefesh. Yeah. Serious nefesh. But, but uh, my upbringing was very, very from yeshivish. I don't know what like titles make me nervous, Batsum. But that makes sense. Just seeing you, knowing yeah, you. I don't like- Considering you titled your album, How Are You, Rebbe? <laughs> I, I, I could see how just a generic title would make you nervous. <laughs> right. So, like, I don't know the album title, yeshivish, not yeshivish. Like, every, every, every chevra is unique in their own way. But, Besides for that, if you had to, if I had to come up with a title of how I grew up, it would be on the more from yeshiva side, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. And uh, and my father was into chesedus, being that our family comes from chesedim originally. So you know, it's a deal. So, like, I know you hate labels, but would you, like, what are you, what are you? If, <laughs> if you had to describe, like, you meet a blind guy and he's like, oh, who are you? What are you? Like, what? How would you define what? So it's like? a deep thing because because somebody said, you know, I, people have asked me this question, and my answer is that my whole goal was is that you should not be able to come up with a title for me. <laughs> Meaning, what genre of music? What what is he Hasidic? Is he Breslov? Is he not Breslov? He doesn't sound like he was born in in the Hasidic community. Like, you know, good, you can't figure out a title for me. All Yidden, who cares? You know what I'm saying? But um, if you want to know, like, in actuality. What do I consider myself? I mean, in the roots, the family comes from bells, you know. But um, am I, did I get into Breslov? Of course I got into Breslov. Who doesn't get into Reb Nachman's Torah? It's unbelievable. You know, call myself Breslov? I don't know. Maybe yeah, maybe no. Well, Meaning, I, d- yeah, yeah, sorry. If learning Reb Nachman's Torah means I'm Breslov, then I guess I'm Breslov. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if learning the Sfasemis means that I'm a Ger Chassid, then I guess I'm a Ger Chassid. Right. You know? I learned Reb Nachman's Torah connected to, to the vision that Reb Nachman had. It changed the whole world. Change the perspective of a lot of things, you know. So I connect to it. I appreciate it. I, I try to teach it, you know. But um, if that makes me Breslov, then uh, I, I, you know, I th- I like what you're doing because Breslov, unfortunately, gets such a bad rap because there are certain Breslov folks that are extreme and just taking it and like folks. Yeah, yeah Breslov folk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being nice, and they're like Breslov folk and Breslov yes. folk, and they like. I, unfortunately, the world thinks like, oh, that's what Breslov is. But like, you go to Gedolim and they're like, of course, Rabbi Nachman's Torah is, is huge, but it got it has a bad rap because, you know. You know, it is funny. By the t- there was there was apparently again, I'm not a historian, but apparently there was controversy controversy in the even in the Torah of Nachman amongst Sadiqim. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But those things are way beyond anybody, anyways, right? Like, right. You know, it's it's told that Rav Dessler writes about the machlokes between the Vilna Gaon and the Chassidim that like don't even bother trying to like figure it out because the tzaddikim had chesbonus and it's beyond like the little guy's capability to grasp that Indian. So right. Whatever went on, you know, between the tzaddikim, who knows? But but yeah, but you know, people apparently Rav Nachman did say that that there was a there was a big Balagan and Shemayim before he was born. <laughs> Apparently, he said this. Mm. I have to find the car for it. But the Yitzhahara said, It's not fair. You're not giving me a fighting chance. Really? You're going to let Reb Nachman be born. And, and, and there was a back and forth. And the Yitzhahara said, I'll make a deal. You give me Rishus to turn Breslov into this like late sonistic sticker thing. Mm. So that nobody will, a lot of people wouldn't take it seriously. They just said, Deal. Wow, and then it, apparently this is this is a uh, this, this. Where do you is a, hear such a thing? That's like it's. Where did I hear this from? I heard it from Reb Baruch Klein. He's a Haligi. He lives in the community. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's very uh, knowledgeable in the world of wrestling. Very cool, you know. But but you know, who knows? Who How knows? do you feel when people like compare your your style or your music to like Rashmi Karbach? Uh, it's, it's an amazing compliment. <laughs> yeah. I would love that, you know. Shlomo Kralbach was somebody who took the Indian of music and made it an Avoida. <laughs> so if you're going to compare me to that, I'd be like, I'll there's, take it. There's know? also like, there's, a, there's like a recent trend, I think, with your new album that it doesn't belong in the CD section of a Judaica store, it belongs in a Sfarim yeah, section. Yeah, I, I just saw that post. Also, yeah. <laughs> and that's really, the that's really funny. But no, I've listened to your album, so I hear, I hear it that, I hear what they're saying. 
But like, what does that mean to you in terms of the idea of creating your album and that for people to to say that it belongs at this farm? Because I don't think there's any album in history in Jewish <laughs> music that people said that about. It's a nice compliment. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I try to be a humble guy, so I try to look at it like, you know, okay, funny, cute, but... If somebody really feels that way, then I know I did something right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, do you do you do you feel? I'm not asking if you feel that way because again, you're trying to be humble. But do you, uh, when you created this this album, or really, you know, this album is just one, you know, I guess manifestation of everything that you're trying to do. Yeah, is is so that the, what your goal is? Yeah. So the truth is, the truth is, is that if you, if you look at the titles of all the songs on the album, and and uh, and you listen to the Nagunim, these are all either experiences or tyrus or different things that I've felt, experienced, or been through that I'm just trying to share. And hopefully it's relatable. I think people relate to it because they say, oh, I could I could relate to that experience. You fall down, you get back up. Who can't relate to that? You know? Mm, yeah. Leave the past behind. Who can't relate to that? Tons of people need right. to hear such a message. So whatever experience in my life made me feel that way, or the tyrus that I saw from the Naim Ali Malik, which really brought that nigga because I connected to that Tyra. So Mamela, I I expressed it through a nigga and now I'm sharing it with you. So if somebody looks at it like a saver, I'm assuming that's the Indian, you know, that I'm really sharing experiences. I'm sharing uh, inspiration that I've had and hopefully, why should I keep it to myself? <laughs> you know, share it with the world. I feel like if I wrote a safer, it would be put in the music department. <laughs> <laughs> If you wrote a saber, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the reverse. Well, you're talking about it, and by the way, like we hate plugging people's svarim. No, we or never, CDs. Like, yeah. That's not what we're doing. Full disclosure: we didn't, we didn't have you on here to promote an album. We had you on here, <laughs> be, you know, to talk, talk to you. Yeah, but organically, I'm, I'm just curious. Like, I just want to read some of the Heligatate. Uh, that's the first song. Lech Lecha, Pnimius, Open My Eyes, Mi Kam Chisrael, Kayach. Or koach, 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 <laughs> koach. koach. Yes, yeah, so, well, I actually wrote that in. Um, I wrote that speaking like an Israeli. It's, that's uh, if you listen to that song, it's in Hebrew. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Well, hold on, I, I'm I'm interrupting here. Speaking, talking about languages, I heard a fact about you, which is <laughs> one of the most goes. interesting facts I heard about one of our guests. Here it goes. You taught yourself Chinese <laughs> in high school. Is that true? So for all the viewers out there, <laughs> get ready for this. Where's the camera? Yeah, yeah, all over. <laughs> oh, all over, all over. <laughs> yeah, that one's on Akhi, yeah. This is a, a true fact. Some, so whoever's watching this, hopefully there's going to be a few cover that remember this. <laughs> when we used to actually listen, I'll give you a little, another little mice that we used to listen to the Chinese radio coming uh, on the way to see Akhitsuk. Was your day. van driver Chinese? No, but I, ha I had to, whenever my father would drive, I would like control what we played. Ah, okay, you're the DJ. Yeah, exactly. So whenever the carpool. So the kids, uh, when I was in eighth grade, I got this silly bug into my head to learn Chinese. I remember I took a book out of the library. Barons, you know Barons, they make yeah, the regions. Yeah, for regions. Yeah. So they, they, they made this book that had like four cassettes with it. And you listen to the cassette and you follow through the book and you take tests. Then there was a program called Dr. Pimsler. Yeah, the Pimsler approach. Also learn a language. I, I yeah. used that. I, I went through like different Nakudas. Wow, you're serious. Yeah, and I ended up like actually rem memorizing a lot of the Chinese language. I used to order in Chinese. I used to go to the Chinese restaurant in Queens, Andy's <laughs> Kitchen, to order in Chinese. Went to Chinatown in the city. Why? 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 It's a good Shila. I ended up using it for cheating on tests. I don't know if the <laughs> schools know this, but what, I, what we did was, I remember there was this one test we took in biology <laughs> in... Uh, <laughs> in high school and I taught the, I taught the oilum to memorize one to ten in Chinese it was a multiple choice test <laughs> right so to memorize one to ten yeah. and then I would sit there and I would go like R like the teacher would be like okay Newcomb stop acting up meanwhile I just said two oh. <laughs> <laughs> one of us remembered the answer and would make that noise and like you thought you were just messing around okay be quiet right you know E R San Si Wu Liu so we're counting one to ten in Chinese so the guy goes Liu Right, so the teacher thinks he's being silly, but he just told everybody that the answer is six. Wow, so you're responsible <laughs> for like many lawyers and doctors. Yeah, like I'm responsible. That, you know? <laughs> yeah. Can you give us like a sentence in Chinese or? Yeah, I, I still remember some. You, I forgot it because you know, really, you'll remember a language and you grow up with it. And it's in your mm -hmm. kishkas. But if you learn a language and you don't keep it up, you'll forget. Right. You know, 
the ones you're born with. So I, I remember, you know. What was your what was your most common? I don't know if you. Hong Gao Xing Zhen Chen Ni Hao Ma. You know, I could say, what's your name? What time is it? Xi Yan Zai Ji Dian Law. I've read that Chinese is one of the hardest languages to learn. Maybe the hardest language. It's hard because there's tones. There's like trup. Right. So so for example, one take the word ma. So you could say it four different ways. Ma ma. Ma, ma, ma di- is what? What does that mean? Four different words. One of them means mother. One oh. of them means horse. One of them no means way. to scream at someone, and one of them means a rope. All I, the same exact word, just different trap. Different tone. I thought Gamara was hard. <laughs> <laughs> they say that the Chinese kids that were mad at their mothers, they would try to get in trouble. They would instead of saying ma, they would say ma. And <laughs> horse, <laughs> horse. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. So, that, for, that, so that's a tukufa in your life. For people learning Gamara and like complaining, I make it so hard to learn. Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. That, that, that was an interesting tukufa. We used to listen to the Chinese radio. On the way to school, they would, the oil would get so annoyed. They wanted to hear music. They wanted to hear shwacky. They wanted to hear something. <laughs> and we were listening. We hear the traffic, you know. That's all along the outside of Belt Parkway. All along the all the Van Wick Expressway. All of that, you know. I've uh, I've seen I've seen videos, and and I it's not I didn't do like specific research and see these videos for this podcast, but I don't remember when I saw videos of you clean shave, like. A little spiky hair, like oh, boy. you're by. I don't know, maybe you were by like a chevrachas, or you're by something, and long you were payas? just. Did you have long payas? No, no, no. payas, and you were just like putting on a show, and I didn't recognize you at first. And I, oh my gosh, that's Joey Newcomb by chevrachas. I, I don't know, by a birthday party. It was I think it was like a video on YouTube. You were just no beard, no payas. Oh, young I got guy. up and and, and said the, the Jackie Mason. Routine. Yes. Yeah, that was in Bridgeport. How old were you then? I was eighteen, nineteen. Not too long ago. Not too long ago. That was in Bridgeport, Connecticut. <clears throat> that actually wasn't in Bridgeport. It was in Muncie. The Rashiva of Bridgeport, Rabbi Berger. He made a Hanukkah party in his house. And I used to do Jackie Mason. Uh, I used to memorize all of Jackie Mason's routines. And uh, I used to do it for the cover. I enjoyed it, yeah. So when did the when did the rest of this, you know, was it was it a conscious decision? Like, I'm just going to grow out my pace, you yeah. know, seven feet long, it was grow sort out my of, beard? Sort of, sort of conscious. I mean, <laughs> growing up, I mean, my father has long payas and a mm-hmm. beard. Growing up, uh, you know, I had payas hanging down behind my ear, like pretty long. Okay. You know, I went to Siach, it's like all the Rebbe and Rech see them, you mm-hmm. know. So I sort of grew up with that surrounding type of thing. So it's like in the Kishkas, you know, as I got older and like I thought it wasn't cool. So that's when it came off, <laughs> you know. And then later on, you know, I went to Yeshiva and Eretz Yisrael and I grew payas back, not like this, but, you know. I grew up with payas. It's part of uh, the whole Indian, you know. <laughs> but it, what, what, it, what's what's the whole Indian? The Indian of payas. I mean, the, the, there is a sugya. There is a sugya. Apparently, the Rizal has a whole write up about the kedusha of certain the certain spots of your head. And, uh, mm-hmm. I've clipped this over here. <laughs> <laughs> and how like the, those parts that have kedusha, you just let the you leave it. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's deep secrets to to what it means. But mm-hmm. in general, when you grow up in a certain environment. You know, kids are moldable, so things stick with you. So, like, payas were meaningful to me. I couldn't necessarily tell you the Arizal, but they're meaningful because they were meaningful to me and my life in general. But uh, after I got married, really, it all came. Yeah. So, we didn't know what was going to happen, you know. But I, I want to touch on uh, school just to drop more. <laughs> Would you classify yourself as a goody goody or a troublemaker? I mean, I think I kind I of answered answer from the Chinese yeah, thing. No, no Shyla, troublemaker. What type you were like <laughs> always. Like you went through Siach Yitzchak and all these places where you ever like kicked out or you just got described in trouble. how he cheated for his entire <laughs> class in Chinese. No, but it's like it was a chevra type of thing. You know, everyone did it. Oh, did I ever get kicked out? Oh boy, did I ever get kicked out? I never got kicked out of Siach Yitzchak. Okay. And by, by keep in mind, I wasn't a, uh, uh, I wasn't a, a, what's the word? Chutzpahdik. Ah, right. okay. I was, I was nutty. So you weren't disrespectful to right. Your, your... I was, you respect people. The big aside from Rav Kalish, right? Covered, 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 covered. Yeah. There's a, you know, you respect people. I, I, I would never be mavai or someone or, or you know, disrespect. So but the teachers, they liked me, but Lamaisa, I was nutty. So like, hmm. I didn't know what to do. Like, they liked me, you know, but you got you to. Gotta... So where do you go after a Like, Where do you go for high school? I went to, I went to Bayonne for one year. Is that in like in Long, like Long Island? That's New like Jersey. A, that's like a, I feel like that's a stop on like a train thing. Yeah, Bayonne. Nobody, nobody knows about this one year. In Bay- <laughs> the one year in Bayonne. Yeah, but exactly the next album cut the, the, the title in Bayonne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I learned from my one year in Bayonne, New Jersey, <laughs> but I went to Shari Razem mainly. Very cool. Yeah, Masifta Shari Razem. 
They're the they're the marching bands. Yeah, that started like at the end, you know. I have no clue what you're talking about. What do you mean the marching they, band? They had a marching band or something like that. You go to weddings. Yeshiva? Some, you go yeah. to a wedding sometimes and then there's this whole entire like marching band of yeshiva guys come strolling in with the whole garb with the drums just pounding away and they're oh, like in precision yeah. and it's amazing. It's Sharia Razim where I think, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't have my facts 100% but I think the yeshiva is very focused on cultivating the skills and the talents of yeah, the Talmud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rabbi Freundlich is a fascinating, he's a, he's a big Jew. He's a, who understands a lot about life and, um, you know, what he pushed in the yeshiva was to, you know, expand your, horizons in different areas you know if a guy was learning all day in the base measures then gavaldic and if a guy wasn't learn learn an instrument right get into woodworking hmm. you know he had electives and 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 i remember he had this thing called goal setting he used to make us fill out goal setting sheets where like you would set a goal and then you would go through all the obstacles that could come up on the way to that goal and how how would you battle each obstacle like when you hear this as an adult you're like wow this is fascinating yeah, stuff like, as a kid this. we were like leave me alone come right. on. <laughs> you know? i'm thinking like that sounds incredible like most people more people should do that that's yeah, really cool yeah it is very important stuff yeah they were very open and understanding you know i mean it wasn't like a, a, a easy place I'm not, you know not it worked too hard <laughs> what it yeah worked hard? meaning they were on top of you and it's not like was the, it a one year stop in Shire? Like oh, you go there and just like free. It's like, it's like it's it's like freedom to do other things, but with intensity. Mm. You know, he took hiking trips, fascinating. Yid. very into wilderness survival. <laughs> you know, yeah, just in case you just end up in a forest for two right, weeks. Some like, you end you up, start yeah. off at the marching band. I'm like, okay, it's definitely a unique place. As it yeah. is, but that's cool. Yeah, how, a, how how many years did he spend there? Three years. Oh wow! So yeah. it's just two high schools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Bayonne and Shari Razim. And then you you had a transformative time in Eretz Yisrael after that? No, before Eretz Yisrael. Oh, it was even before. Here's the, the whole process was is that, uh, you know, did I ever get kicked out? We won't say from where, but maybe. <laughs> Come on, give a shout out. Give a shout out to your people. <laughs> I love all Eden. To be honest, I love all Eden. Um, there, I did get uh, thrown out of some camps. Ah, okay. For making some trouble. You know, um, and the sugya of being thrown out is an interesting sugya. You got to love Jews, yeah. and and I, knowing my, I probably would have thrown me out also. <laughs> you know, would you have though? <laughs> I'm not sure though. <laughs> no, because I don't think you throw anybody out. Would you? I heard a mice like this. I don't like to. I don't want to end up saying anything that's going to make like I have an opinion against all you people. You know, right. even though that may be the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, there's a mice with Rav Steinman. I'm blown away from this mice. Huh? There was a certain Rosh Hashiva, Rebbe, uh, Manal, something. I don't, I don't I forgot what title he had. But he came to Aaron Leib Steinman. He said, there's a boy in the yeshiva that this and this and this happened. And and what I like also about the Rebbe is that he wouldn't make that move without going to the Tzadik. Yeah. He, he decided I have to, have to have to throw him out. It's not good for whatever it was, you know. And uh, he goes to Aaron Leib Steinman. And he says, this boy, this and this and this, I decided I have to throw him out. I want to know the tzaddik's advice. So the tzaddik looks at him, Gabal. And the tzaddik says, what's his name? So right now the rabbi's thinking to himself, like, what difference does it make? But, okay, his name is Getzel. Uh, okay, what's his mother's name? Now Rosh, this Rosh Hashiva is starting to wonder, like, what's he, what's he getting at here? So he says, honestly, I have no idea. And Steinman looks at him and he says, you don't know his mother's name? So he said, no. So he's like, that means you never really davened for him. You never davened for him and you made a decision to throw him out? At least davened for him. And then make that decision. The biggest kash in the world. The biggest kash in the world. Did you even daven? Guy, guy goes through a hard time in business. Can't believe this. Can't. Did you even daven? Maybe that's the biggest kasha. Did you even daven? Before anybody jumps to conclusions or makes any decisions, daf daven. So when it comes to the sugi of throwing out, I think Ravaran Leib was being Megala. Did you daven for him? <laughs> Do you care about him? Do you love him? If that's the case, and still things were, whatever, then we'll talk. But the first step, daven for him. Love him. You follow me? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. That was great. That was really But, but uh, sometimes like... Uh, you know, I think back to certain situations, and I'm, I'll never say names. 
I'm never ever saying names because everybody has chashbonus and the Abishta runs the world. But I think back to certain situations where I got thrown out for certain things. And I think back and I'm like, imagine like the guy would have came over and put his arm around me and said, Tzadikul, <laughs> let's learn about this sugya. Whatever it is that he didn't like that I was doing, mm-hmm. let's learn about this. And and I'm going to help you get over this in the science. Isn't that the tachas of a, of a Rebbe? Mm. Everybody has nisyonis, everybody has failures, everybody has situations in their life. And and maybe somebody else could be Makarov, but he, I'd rather not. But there's a Svasamis, by the way, this past week, and I'm going with sugar from the Svasamis. It's crazy. I shared it with everybody on Friday. I don't know if you saw you saw my post. I don't know if you saw Maybe, it. maybe. I'm not sure. Remind I, saw, I saw something about Tubi. I don't know if it was Tubi. <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> not, not the Tubi. Not the Tubi one. <laughs> no. There's a Svasam. The Medrash considers Yaakov Avinu running away to Haran. You ask him, anybody, why did Yaakov run away to Haran? Because he had to. He had to run away from his brother. His brother wanted to kill him. He stole the Bechari. He stole the Brachas. Rivka told him to run. The Medrash says fascinating thing. The Medrash says, his running to Haran was the Indian of somebody who killed someone by accident and has to go to Galos. We all learn growing up that if you kill someone by accident, you have Ar-Mikla. to go to the R.A. Mikla. So the, so the Medrash says, you have to go to the R.A. Mikla. Yaakov was Mekayim, R.A. Mikla, he went to Haran. What? Says the Svasem, is Yaakov killed someone by accident, he has to go to the R.A. Mikla, he has to go to Galos. What's going on? Svasem is crazy. I'm telling you. Get ready for this. Hold on to your chair. I wish I had a seatbelt on this. <laughs> Hold on to your chair. As Fasama says, it was considered a hate that Asa was pushed away all your day, Yaakov. You know why? Should have been Makarovim. One liner in this Fasama. Should have been Makarov. Which means it seems like Lachari Yaakov stayed away from him. He's a bad guy. But he should have been Makarovim. Yeah, maybe he had the ability to be makar of him. So the medrash is being magala that if you have the ability to be makar of someone and you don't, hmm. it's a bechina of someone a hayrig nefesh b'shkaga. Scary, crazy. Hayrig nefesh. You have to go to the. You have to be metakin. You have to go to a galus. You have an opportunity to be mechazik somebody to put your arm around them to pick somebody up to be makar to be mechazik to help to do some type of chazik and you don't. It's bad news. And, and like you're in, you're sort of in Chinuch now. You, you you know I know you teach or you're a Rebbe in the morning at the Terrace Shimon. Yeah, he's not sort of. He is in. He is. Now. Yeah. <laughs> um. I know life gets busy busier for you as you know Baruch Hashem, your career is like exploding. Um. But is that a scary like thought for someone who's in Chinuch? You have to be like super super careful. Y- yeah. Yeah. I mean, for us already. Rabbi Grona is, is a tzaddik of Yid. Yeah. And the whole vibe of the yeshiva is really just chizik and kira. So it's like it's it's like easier than, you know. But of course, I mean. On a personal forget, level. Forget about a Rebbe who's in chinuch. Every parent is in chinuch, right? Right, says, yeah. I'm in chinuch. Anybody who's a parent is also in chinuch. <laughs> Everybody's in chinuch. It's like anyone who owns a house, owns real estate. Right? <laughs> of course, you have to be careful. You have to be, you have to be, mom, so careful. You know, I'm not a, a chinuch master. I'm just. Reading as fast as I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking about myself. I think about, you know, the different nisyonis and challenges that I've been through that maybe could have been different, maybe, you know. But most people end up becoming self-made and they flip out in yeshiva. That's what ends right. up happening, right? You end up going to yeshiva, you flip out, you become all stark, you know. Unless you were stark already, or Hashem, there, you didn't like that. But they even end up being self-made Jews, you know? They end up flipping out in Eretz Yisrael, you meet a rabbi, you meet a tzaddik, and then you're set. Is is there anything that you would, like, go back in your life and just say, I want to take out that kufa completely, you know? Or, or like, are you in the in the camp of, you know I can't what? say that because I, the, the, in the world of Ain Ed Malvade, you can't, any, anything that happened in my life was clearly uh, somehow a building block. Whether I understand it or not, and whether I hate it or not, and whether I, I wish it wasn't there or not, Lamaisa, it was there for a reason, right? So I can't say that. But there, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, they're private. Everybody has yeah. issues that they're dealing with. They're private zachen, not private zachen. You know, if I would think practically, would would life have been easier? But who said life is easy? Adam le omol yulod. When life is tough. We're smoothing with the chaver. We're smoothing with the chaver. Yankov Avinu, Yitzchak Avinu, Avram Avinu, David Amalek, Moshe Rabbeinu. The Mount Rushmore of Judaism <laughs> are all people that didn't have normal lives. Think about it. So interesting. Did anybody have a regular life, stable home? <laughs> right. Moshe Rabbeinu. 
Right. That's so. Right. That's so interesting. David Amalek, the, the world thinks he's 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 uh, a mom. A mom's right? yeah. Right. His 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 father-in-law wants to kill him. His son is after him. He's hiding in caves. He has trauma after trauma after trauma. David Amalek is the whole time. Kira Vasilik Kim Litaib. He's dancing. He's with the Irish there. And if you put if you put these uh, if you put our our Mount Rushmore on sh- like shit resumes, no one would have got shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like that's like where my mind goes right away because oh, we're all we're all like trying to fit a you know have a perfect life and like the perfect resume is is like not kicked out of anywhere and not this and not that and not that. But that's yeah, not. Somebody made a joke, right? If you if you would set up Yaakov Avinu, they would say, oh, yeah, his brother's off the Dara. <laughs> right? If you would set up a Yitzchak, right, his brother's a terrorist. He's, right. <laughs> You know, <laughs> they make jokes. They make jokes like that. David Amalek, I don't know. He's 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 dancing around doing a spider. This maybe you think maybe wrestling, the, maybe right. he's, he's but maybe, maybe maybe there's like a deeper meaning behind it all, especially for our generation, where there's like we're all like running after that perfection so much. Yeah, but it's not. Maybe it's not supposed to be that way. It's not. Karav Hashem Lanish Brelave, the broken people. We schmooze with the Chaver and Rabbi Groners. Rabbi Groner has a big Yisait. It's okay to not be okay. That's his Yisait. Mm. But we, we were schmoozing over Shabbos. And not only it's okay to not be okay, it's give a halt to not be okay. You know, People that are broken, people that are broken come to the highest places. You know what Babacher Rebbe said? Somebody told me, B'Shem L'Babacher Rebbe. Still didn't find it inside. <laughs> Babacher Rebbe apparently said, you take the middle matzah and you crack it in half. It's unbelievable. Yeah. The middle matzah is connected to life. The one holiday that we feel proud, we're Jews, we're chosen, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. The proudest moment on any holiday for the Jew is the Seder night. Lean, royal, malchazdik, four cups, right? And what do you do before you start the whole process? You take out the heart, the middle one is going to get the heart, and you crack it in front of everyone with, with a smile. <laughs> yeah. You break the heart, and you, that's who we are. We've Did- been broken time and time again, and we only got bigger from it. And to take that that part further, I heard that the Lavlau Trevor says, and you take the the bigger half and you hide it, Rafi Coleman. Yeah. And the the seder is not complete until you find that bigger half, right? You can't end the seder until you find the Rafi Coleman, and that bigger half represents the majority of Kliyosrol, the people in the seder night who are not by a seder. They don't even know if they're Jewish. Wow. And. And your avoda is is to find the bigger half because the seder is not the seder is not complete until you Mom find it. Go out. That's a whole new. That's a whole new Indian. We just pieced together a vote. Wow! <laughs> I feel like I should contribute to this, but I have nothing else to add to that. There was a there, we, Rabbi Grona came to a Friday night with a bunch of guys, and he was saying we, we were talking about it, so the Indian of it's okay to not be okay. So we wrote a nigga. I don't know if we could put this out, but you know, it's okay to not be okay, and it's fast. It's okay because it's not a broken nigga. It's I'll rise from the brokenness. Mm. You know what brokenness does to us? It brings us even bigger. We went through a Holocaust. Now you have a million yeshivas and, and Kirov movements. It doesn't get to us. Brokenness brings us to a higher place. So the fact that everybody's going through all these in Yonim, you know, taunts with it. Right. I, I think what you're bringing up is a good point that like, I think a lot of time, probably everyone is broken in some way, but mm-hmm. a lot of times we just think that's, that's okay. It's not normal, but you're saying it is normal when someone is broken. We're all that's what we're trying to do. We're broken people and we're trying to build up, but you have to be aware of it. If you're not even aware of it, you can't even build on that. Yeah, yeah. It's posh. By the way, I'll say Eschatoy Animaski Hayoim. Would I ever look at a television? <laughs> but one time when we were on vacation. <laughs> don't turn around, don't turn around. <laughs> uh uh-uh. <laughs> uh. You only play meaningful minutes on that. So know, we'll be Magal over here. Um one time we were on vacation, my wife, my wife likes to look at the cooking the cooking shows, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So for Shalom Bias purposes, bad some, I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't want to look at a cooking show. <laughs> I'd rather learn a Svasamas by the pool, I'll be honest. I'd rather sit by the pool with a beer and a Svasamas. Right. You know? That's your dream vacation. Yeah, yeah. or Tyra from the Mashkiach, Ro Wilson. I love the Tyra. But... The but we watched it and 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 she was getting all annoyed at me because I was coming up with spiritual mashallah for everything that was happening and she's like come on can you just watch this thing so anyways there's this show called Chopped yeah you know what that is yeah, yeah sure Chopped and I'm like well I'm blown away from this every whole uh, every every family during uh, during uh, oh COVID, they now they now do chop every then. family during COVID was doing chopped because they couldn't go out of their houses right. <laughs> they were just doing chopped so basically if you know what Chopped is there's four rounds. 
and there, there's four chefs. And and in the, the first round, yeah, everybody has to make an appetizer. Second round, everyone has to make a main dish, whoever's left. Mm-hmm. Right? Whoever, and they mean, keep eliminating a person. Each yeah, time. that's the only part of the muscle I don't like because we don't eliminate it. <laughs> okay, but, fine. But but here's here's the muscle. You win. I think the prize is like fifty thousand dollars or something. Okay. Hope it's whatever. <laughs> it's a big amount of money that you could win. So these people come hoping to win that amount of money. They want to redo their restaurants, whatever it is. The chefs they come in and they have all these rounds, and they give everybody a box of ingredients. They open up the ingredients. And they want them to make, let's say, uh, a fish taco, right? They open up the ingredients. There's jelly worms, <laughs> right? There's like uh, mushroom. No, mushrooms might work, but um, uh, something that like the stuff that doesn't work. And they look at the yeah. ingredients and they're like, "Oh God, I have 20 minutes. I have to make a fish taco with these." And you have to use all the ingredients. That's the chachma. This is, by the way, this is gavalt. <laughs> And chopped, you have to use all the ingredients. And then they put you on a timer. The timer is your life, by the way. Because mm. everybody's here for a certain amount of time. I felt like this. I never saw someone open up the ingredients and say, what? I'm out. Never saw somebody say, I'm out because of the ingredients. Why? The price. $20,000. $50,000. Chop, what's going on here? Guy comes down to this world. He opens up his box of ingredients. He's like, what? This is what you gave me? You gave me this? Matzah, this type of family, this parent, that Rebbe, this, that, whatever it is in your life, this issue, that issue, anxiety, blah, blah, that Nassoy, this type of this thing, you gave me the, <laughs> you expect me to make a hamburger with this stuff? <laughs> David just says, yeah, just make the hamburger. You're on the timer and don't say I'm out because there's an oil hamba, there's a, there, there, what comes out of pulling through the the other end of when you take all these things that you were given in life and make that burger, <laughs> the reward is not even fathomable. It's 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 a level of hasaga, whatever it means, Alamaba. So how could I never saw anyone say I'm out because twenty thousand dollars, you understand? So you come down to this world and you open your ingredients and you're like, How on earth do you expect me to make a burger with these ingredients? David says, just make the burger, just make the burger. Mm. Not making any sense. Yeah, that's beautiful. My wife told me after that she's like, "You're not allowed to watch it." <laughs> like, I'm she's just like, "It's a piece of chicken." I kind of want to like expose you to like a lot of TV shows and then like, okay, like what's <laughs> well, what do we get? Like twenty four. Like, make what a whole is segment, it? Like, what, what's going on? The yeah. only part of Chop that is that's not nagaya to us is nobody gets chopped. Right. Mm. Nobody is. is we don't cancel culture. We don't, we don't yeah. cancel anybody. You here? You're here. You're here. We'll be right back to this episode. But we're pausing for a very important niggin from Yaakov Langer. Nine, 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 nine. Thank you, AMR Pharmacy. <laughs> Guys, nine, it's the nine, best nine, pharmacy nine, nine, nine. in the world. You know who they are. What other pharmacy goes to the biggest podcast in the Jewish world and says, I hey, think guys, you're pushing that we're the biggest. We're going to get like knocked down to number 10 soon, probably. You really think with so? All that. But who cares? We're, you know what? It doesn't make a difference, number one. Number two... The point is, AMR is number one. AMR like is number that, one. Like, oh. They are the number one pharmacy. They they really are. They um, are. For all the they're reasons so that we said in every single one of these episodes, and we're going we're gonna to continue to say it, because if you didn't switch yet, it's time to have a pharmacy in your corner that has the same family values, religious values, and medical values as you. Mm-hmm. That is, like, I don't know if anything I just said was accurate I think anyway. that makes sense, and, and it's, you know what? Someone asked me, like, where are they? I said, okay, they're centrally located in New Jersey, but they're everywhere in New York, New Jersey. Yeah. So if you live in Brooklyn, you have AMR. Yeah. If you live in five towns, you could have AMR. I, I love that. Like you travel, like, I, you know, I was in Lakewood the other week. I, okay, boom. AMR, if I need, they are everywhere. So that's very useful. They are everywhere. <laughs> oh, bum, 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 bum. We're going to Thank you, Shem, people. We're we, going to get from State Farm, State we got Farm. your letter and we don't oh, care. Bum, 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 bum. Guys, go to AMR Pharmacy. Go to amrpharmrx.com. Call 848-222-1110. The best decision you'll make today is give them a call. Enjoy the rest of this episode. episode. So I, I want to delve into you. You had something go on in Eretz Yisrael. What, what was your experience like in Eretz Yisrael? So really, yeah. so there was one year in between high school and Eretz Yisrael where I, I really had a big change. I really had a big switch. I went to a yeshiva called Bridgeport. Oh, the oil and fiber rang over there. I, I tried out for Bridgeport, but oh yeah, know. yeah. I didn't end up going there, but you tried out like a, I don't know. I don't. What's the what's the thing? I took a fire there. Yeah. I don't know. Could it be I was too far from the mic? No, can't no, you're good. 
Okay, so uh, Bridgeport, it was a good place. We had good times there. Um, we used to have comes this Thursday night, and I remember um, there was one Rebbe who, to this day, is my Rebbe. His name is Rabbi Newberger from Muncie. To this day, is my Rebbe. That's where I had a big change of life. <laughs> Because what ended up happening a lot was that a lot of the chaver would fall asleep in the middle of the year, and it would end up me and him going back and forth in the gemuda. And I, I was never into learning, and suddenly the Torah was changing my life, and I started to feel spiritual. You know, I'm gonna sound like all the rishivas. You know what? It changed my life. Wow! I started. Can I finish Masech Nesedarim that year? I felt like mamish. It was like the first Masech you ever finished. Yes. Yeah. And at like 19 years old. Yeah, the first Masech I ever finished. It's a big chizik for a lot of people, probably. Taka. That year, I finished the dharma. I sat in the base medrash and I got all spiritual. Thursday night, we would sing the gunam Arab Shabbos and this and that. And Rabbi Nurberger really changed changed my life. You know, we, we got very connected, and 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 I, I saw myself hitting going onto the growth path. <laughs> and then my friend Shimi Grama, all of a shalom. He was a good friend of mine from L.A. Unfortunately, he was nifter in a car crash, but. Very good buddy of mine. We hanged out a lot together. He he went to Merkaz. He was in Bridgeport with us. He went to Merkaz. He calls me up. He's like, you got to come to Merkaz. I already told everybody there's a guy coming who plays guitar. He speaks Chinese. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come to Merkaz. I tell you. So he pretty much convinced me to come to Merkaz. I don't know how many people know that. But uh, I ended up going to Merkaz. And then it just, whoo, things went like flying from there. You know, started learning more and more and more and more. And then I got, you know, going to the tzaddikim. When you go to Eretz Yisrael, you're in the world of of of... Everywhere you go, you're in Hashem's presence, but like you're in the world of Ruchnias and Eretz Yisrael. I'm saying there's no way out. You understand the trips that you go on are spiritual. Right. Over here, if I want a break and I want to go on a trip, I go to the zoo. You go you go to a trip and you go to the Kaisal. So even the zoo in Tel Aviv is spiritual. I, yeah, I, guess, I would say so. Yeah. We once, oh, we have a We once went to the zoo, the biblical zoo. Yeah. Oh, that was a party. <laughs> so I made some lachaims before. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it's a move. Was, it's a move. I, we went in there. We were throwing bomba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, people have fun with the monkeys there. Yeah, the monkeys give all stuff to. It's, stuff. it's a good zoo, yeah. but, but everything, besides the fact that everything in Eretz Yisrael is bad, some spiritual admas kodesh, right? But but you're in the world. You're like you're you're in a twenty four hour mikvah. Imagine a guy went to the mikvah never came out for a year. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Be very wrinkly. <laughs> but I, mean, I know even I know. You have to have that mindset. You have to understand that you're an RT stroll. Thank God I went already. <laughs> very day, I just, I just, <laughs> looking a few him. minutes later. I just, right, right, right. Very good. But but when you, if you have to go, thank God I went to RT Sol already when I was on the, the right, way. In the right, in the right, going up. Yeah, so right. like when we went to the Tzadik and we went to Meron at the log, but everything was just like Every 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 Indian that I was part of, every tish that I went to, every Mayron Lag Ba'imer, the Tzadikim and Sfas and the Marsan Bay, everything was just like boom, 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 pushing me more and more and more. Like I, I got so spiritual. Like it happens to people, you know. Do, do you you strike me as a person who I kind of could have seen staying in Eretz not never coming back? Yet. Yeah, me too. I could see myself staying there. Um, you know, the Ebrish has a plan at the mm-hmm. end of the day, and I learned that in my life very clearly. If I would tell you what I was planning on doing. It wasn't. It wasn't what it is now. <laughs> it was something totally different. We we were. Uh, I I would I would have loved. I mean, everybody would have loved to be an artist role, but they had a different plan. That's it. Who doesn't want to be an artist role? I, I considered living there, moving there, you know, dating there, all, all the chesbonus that maybe a lot of people have, you know, but it, it didn't happen. But I remember when we were first married, I was learning in Kailo. Rabbi Force has a Kailo here in the afternoon. In mm-hmm. the morning, Rabbi there was Yid Rabbi Oppenheimer. It was Gavaldic. It was Gavaldic. It was like 10 Chaira. We just learned to start. I was in Kailo uh, for a few years. And then we were, I loved Kirov. I always loved Kirov. When I was in Eretz Yisrael and like certain Kirov trips or, or uh, Kirov Avaidas were happening, I would like come on the trip with my guitar and get involved. I just love Kirov. So I, we were planning on like doing one of these out of town Kirov things. We were. I remember me and my wife driving down to Passaic. We took an interview with someone. Different. We did uh, Skype interviews with with different communities, mm-hmm. yeah. out of town communities, to do Kirov. That was the plan. You understand? Koyol, Kirov. Wow. Like Dallas. No this, music, yeah. no singing, nothing. Davis just said, "Uh, uh-uh. why? I have no idea. Whatever God wants." But but it, it all took, everything took a whole different direction. The, this minion started in Farakway. There was a minion there, and Rebetan made Aliyah. 
but Rabbi, Rabbi Eitam was part of the minion. Rabbi Fisher also is in Eretz Yisrael now. All the, all the original Yidin, not all, but Rabbi Fisher. Is You're referring to the in the white shul. In the white shul, yeah, uh, the Nusach Svard minion. Nusach Svard minion. That that minion start. I joined that minion at some point in the beginning, and um, and that that was like a, that was like I'm stuck to this. Yeah, are, are, do you think like you're next? <laughs> that was like <laughs> just, uh, that was a. You're bringing up a secret over here because because <laughs> Rabbi Fisher and if Rabbi Fisher sees this, yes, I'm saying it. Rabbi Fisher uh, is did ask me to come and join him in the Moshav over there. I don't know if I could just pick up and go. It's a big avoid, you know. Yeah. But um. So that th that minion picked up for that, you. Yeah, and, and so and suddenly I started. I had a place in the community where mm -hmm. I was like part of a tzibur. I was like, this is my place. And once you have that, he, people don't understand the kaiyach of a tzibur. The kaiyach of having a matzah, having that chevra, that place that you're part of, it's a game changer. So then that. So now I was like in getting in Farakoe, like, you know, and then I met Rabbi Groner and I was like, ooh, Rabbi Groner. Yeah. And then after I met Rabbi Groner, somebody hired me for the first gig and I said this on the other interview. So, but uh, he had hired me for like the first thing. He saw that he knew that I played guitar. He saw I played guitar. He's like, hey, you did good. Paid me like $200. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, we rocked it out. And then the next day, someone called and was like, hey, I heard you do a Shabbat brachas. I'm like, okay, I guess I do. <laughs> and I did there. And then before you know it, I bought a speaker. I started going. And then things got around word of mouth for a while. All local word of mouth stuff. And then I met Nani Gross because it was really um, his brother who set up the first gig. So I met his mishpacha. We did the first song, then the second song, and then the album. And then... Slowly, slowly, it became what it is. But, but, but this was all. This was all God's plan. You understand? Like, I didn't plan for this. Right. I mean, you didn't. Like many musicians and many singers, they have their life and they see themselves getting into music. You, yeah, didn't. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I played guitar. I loved being part of a kumsitz. I loved doing stuff. But until that first thing, I, that wasn't. I didn't. I had zero plan for. That. I was learning right. Kailo. We we're gonna go out of town and do Kirov. Maybe. Uh, one day moved to Eretz Yisrael, something like that, you know, like that was the plan. But they just said, I have a different plan. It's Pasha. It's Pasha. I didn't plan for anything. Really? Yeah. Just just happened. Just happened. The minion happened. And then I didn't start the minion. I joined the but, minion. But at a certain point also, you got very involved and you're probably the voice and behind so much of what Thank You Hashem is, right? Thank You Hashem is, uh, yeah, it's very dear to me. Very close to my heart. I love how we refer to like "thank you, Hashem." It used to be like a <laughs> sentence that people say. Now it's like a movement. It is. Right. I guess it's a brand at the yeah. end of the day. But 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 the but as long as it remains a sentence, though, that's meaning. Yeah. The ichor of it, like what? One what time I was in a camp, a guy said, "Can I have the thank you, Hashem hat?" It's like if a condition that you thank Hashem every day. <laughs> I just wear a thank you, Hashem hat because it's a thank you, Hashem thing. Is cool right. now. Can't be like Gucci. <laughs> the, the the and I know the founding of of T Y H. Mm -hmm. Hashtag nega. The founding of it is pure. The beginning of it, and it's still because the people behind it are really trying to push a message. And sometimes the way you push a, push a message is the way the generation will be macabre with that message. So maybe we live in a generation that people need swag. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Maybe people need a cat, people need a thing, you know. <laughs> but if you can make a spiritual Indian cool, I think my toy my noy, you know. Uh, I'll be honest. I'll be straight up honest. We're, we'll, we'll talk real over here. Yes. People, people said, oh, the bracelet. People badmouth. Thank you, Asha. You know, I, I've I've heard flack for it. You know, really. Yeah, thank you, Asha. Spiritual Indian. Put it on a bumper sticker. And then the other side would be, yeah, why not? It goes back to the Moshe Rabbeinu David Malach. It goes back to our Mount, Mount Rushmore. Right, meaning, meaning you got to do what you got to do. I, there's a fear. There's a fear that if you turn this into a whole movement, then it's going to become, it's going to lose its meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but that fear can't stop you from pushing the Indian. You just have to daven and hope and try to push also that don't let this thing lose its... Lamashal, uh, you, you teach Rav Nachman. I remember I had a long schmooze with a guy. Ancient years, you fall down and get back up. Uh, um, I feel about stars, even when you're Nachman, even when you're in a bad place spiritually, the Hebrew is there. So, what's the fear of teaching that? Oh, so the guy says, Oh, so I can do whatever I want, so right. I'll be in a bad place, so I'll be in, right? So, oh, so I could, oh, so I could do a virus, Hashem still loves me, right? Which right. is, of course, it's the truth. I don't think anybody could deny that if somebody, I don't think you could deny that if somebody. 
Shem doesn't love you. He loves you. You got punished for the right. union of crime so, and punishment. So what's, what's the answer to that? Oh, so I, there's a fear. So the question is, do you not teach a piece of truth because of a fear of how people will take it? Hmm. Maybe that's the biggest kasha, right? The the Yisait is true, right? Let's say the Yisait is true. Let's say this is a piece of Torah. This is Emes. When, when do you draw the line of like, I can't teach it though because I'm afraid... Now, between me and you, I don't think too many people are, are running away from Torah mitzvahs because they're hearing Hashem still loves them. <laughs> mm. But but I would say the, I think the odds that, are low. Yeah. I think you have to validate everything. You have to validate every year. You have to validate every time that somebody has. You have to validate every fear someone has. But I think if you think a little bit deeper, I think if we're dealing with a, a dar especially, that it will only help teaching these yusayinahs. So not that the fear is invalidated, but that the fear, you know, doesn't, can't take away from teaching the truth. People need to hear that the Abishta loves them. Maybe more people are feeling, maybe more people keep on failing because they, they don't think the Abishta loves them anymore. Maybe right. the, the moment a guy says the Abishta loves me like a son and he'll never give up on me. You know what? I want to do better. As opposed to wanting to As do opposed worse. To, okay, therefore I'll do whatever I want. Right. You have, to have to, you have to put some faith Me, in the people. Meaning, if somebody has that fear, I would like to go around and take a poll and see how many people that heard the Torah of Nachman that made that decision. Okay, therefore, I'll do whatever I want. Meaning, and if we, the, can, we can take a poll. We can take a poll. <laughs> I mean, and, and if the numbers come out, Taka, then maybe. But I don't think that's the truth. But, I, I, but. I hear you're saying with the whole thank you, Hashem, movement, brand, whatever, I, I don't know what to call it. So um, the, oh. I, I think you're right. Like, if if the heart and soul always stays, and that's always the, the icker, the main force behind it, Nothing could really stop it because that's the goal of it. To what do you thank think you, the, Hashem. What do you think the message, the message is? The like, message to, to you. And, and the chevra behind thank you, Hashem. I'm going to say their names over here. Eli Malach Bloomstein, Aryeh Bloomstein, and others. Rabbi Yaakov over there. <laughs> and and as many as many people. These Yidin are on fire. These Yidin are spiritually on fire. I and the chaverim. We started together. If I remember correctly, I was doing my first album, and we put "Thank You Hashem" on the album, and and they were starting the, the logo and the merch and yeah. the and the all that stuff. We started together with Tzadam, and we're, we're it's Tzadam. It, it, and, and if somebody says, "Are you connected to Thank You Hashem?" Yes, I am. You know, are are you Thank You Hashem? If you want to call me Thank You Hashem, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but they're, they're do you bleed yellow these and black? Are, right? <laughs> these yidin are behind it, and and I'm chaverim, and 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 we we love what each other do, and we push each other like mashuga. So before Thank You Hashem had an official so, logo. Oh, you're middle? What? I am interrupting. Sorry, I, I thought you finished. Well, well, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> T-Y-H. Oh, so these Yidin, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, Eli Melech and Aryeh and the Chevra and, and, and uh, the, has a shul. Haley KMH. Shul. KMH. Yossi Zakatinsky. Oh, them's on fire. I'm spiritually on fire. It's incredible. They're pushing a Havas Hashem. They're pushing a love for Yiddishkeit. That's what they're pushing. That's the site. If you look at the, Thank You Hashem's Instagram page, Lamashal, right? There's a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily have to do with Thank You Hashem, the Indian of Thanking Hashem. You know, there's classes, there's, there's Rabbi Yossi Shiorim, there's yeah. Varts on the Parsha, pushing Ahava, spirituality, fire, Chasidus, Befrat. Mm -hmm. The Olam was, was very connected to Chasidus. It's a to spend. The, it's a kedai for people who are local to or not local to spend the Shabbos there. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's an, a certain see, energy. You'll see the fire behind it. Like uh, outsiders, you look at this. Thank you, Hashem. You see a bumper sticker. You're like, oh, a few guys probably smart. They made a whole business. Like, yeah, you, you, it's kedai to come. If, if if the island was ever in Lawrence, you come to one seventy three, Lawrence Avenue. I have no Lawrence problem. Avenue is it one seventy three? I don't know. One seventy eleven. Right before the train tracks. Come to Shabbos. Meet these Yidin. Dama with them. You'll be like, ooh, Royal's on fire. Mm. And then you see the tight saw where, you know, and uh, I, a magnet, a bracelet, uh, whatever it means, you know. I don't wear a bracelet, but but uh, but it, you have to go and spread something the way that people will be macabre. So if there's a whole community of people that would, wouldn't have heard anything if I was just giving speeches, and now they're getting connected to this Indian. Through a bracelet or through a magnet, call it on. I, I was watching two lives on Instagram from Thank You Hashem. It was actually really interesting. One was with Rabbi Yassi Schwartz and also Russell, with yeah. um, Mrs. Faye Bloomstein. Mrs. Faye Bloomstein. They're they're great. It was it's exactly what you're saying. It was more than just Thank You Hashem, Thank You Hashem. No, no, like there's there Building was the there was Tyra over here. Yeah, Mama, yeah, yeah. it was learning. Um, so yeah, I actually 
in the beginning, beginning of all of this, um, Ari Mendel gave me a thank you, Hashem cap. But it was before like the classic logo and I wore it. I it was it looked a little different. Maybe I should have worn it for this interview. It looks I know that cap. I have it. it. I feel does it still so say cool. Vintage that, farm on? Yes, it does. <laughs> Plugged Ravari, vintage farm. Shout out to Ravari over so there. So I wore it and I it went to uh, it was before we started this. We were like talking, uh, yeah. Nachi and I were talking about the podcast a little and, and Nachi made an event for Meaningful Minute with Rav Gaff. Yeah. And I wore it to the air. Oh my gosh. I got stopped by, realistically, probably 20 people. I mean, there's a lot of people there, but 20 yeah. people are like, where did you get that cat? It, was, thank you, it wasn't really a thing yet. Like right. we're just starting right. Right. and people were hungry for this. Like it was- I think it's like the, I think it's like today's dar. It's just like, I, my personal opinion, and this is you know who might have an opinion, but this is my opinion, is that you just gotta go to the to the kids and to the people where they're at. So right. if they're if they want merch, if that's what's gonna do it, if it's gonna be there or there, that's the aside. You just go go to where that's, they are. That's it, and bring them up. I mean specifically, thank you, Hashem. We're called Yehudim. Yeah, Hapam Oides Hashem. We're named after Yehudim. This, this week's parsha. Jew. What's a Jew? A Jew is from the word Yehuda, Jude, right? A Jew. In his essence, in his primius, as Fasemis writes, a Jew in his primius and his essence is the union of Haida, which means two things. It means thank you, and it also means to admit to something, right? To be Maida, mm. which is one and the same, says it's Fasemis, because when you admit to something, when you thank someone, you're admitting he did something for you, he did you a timer. Yeah. Admitting and thank you is very, very related. That's why Maida and Haida, it's the same word. But a Jew in his essence is thank you, Hashem. He needs to have gratitude. Gratitude will change his life. People who are going through the biggest struggles, Leilenu, and everybody should be Zaycha to Yeshua and whatever they need, but people who are going through, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They have traumas and different things. For some reason, gratitude is changing them. Like they, they, you'll speak to these, yeah, gratitude, gratitude, you know? Because the essence of it, he's connecting to his essence as the pshat. How many, how many kids stop you and, and just scream thank you Hashem do you, do you feel like do you ever say like I'm not Hashem by the way? <laughs> oh like that yeah yeah that's funny I, I wouldn't be able to do an interview with you and not bring this up um, bum, ba, dum. uh oh no, here we go no no it's nothing crazy it's nothing crazy but it's pretty crazy I, I do feel like I have a small part of it and I feel cool for it so I think maybe it was my friend Zoli Honig I don't know there was there's this Hasidish awesome chef on Instagram, put out a video about him eating, biting at the pickle and the crack from it. And I was talking to Zoli and he's like, he's like, Yago, this, this has to go places. He's like, send me a video. And then I, I did it and then Zoli did it and then like five people did it and then this thing, Whoa. it exploded. It exploded. I'm not the force behind it, but I was in the he beginning of it. The I thought it was that, 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 the, chef, the chef started I don't know the chef, that. I thought it was just like this grainy video of this guy going, <laughs> Like, no, no it's the like chef, grainy I forgot video. his name, the Hasid chef, and he was just like, I, I follow his Instagram, it's, it's Gavaldic, like Monday morning, he's like eating gefilte fish, and like, <laughs> it's great, and it just, whatever, it was it was really just shtick, it was just like fun, like, like really harmless humor, but then you literally, you took it and really infused Kedusha, people who don't know what I'm talking about, you made up a whole song and why it's actually, yeah. there's 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 something to it. By the way, it's funny, because of that, people, any anything like somebody will, will give a speech and he'll say like, you know. Um, the marshals. I'm gonna say, oh, the Kedusha's lady said the coffee isn't. I'm drawing a niggin. <laughs> like, you expect me to write a niggin about any Indian? Right. We, we expect a niggin about this pot, this whole interview. Like, <laughs> oh, maybe Taka. Taka at the end, you're gonna have to write you're a, have to a, write a niggin. But the the the, the krach on the pickle. Oh, that's so funny. I had no idea that you're from that. So basically, there was this video that went around of this guy, right? <laughs> and the the expression on his face was mamish like a guy who just. He just saw the the red string turn white and the <laughs> also you know the sound. <laughs> he just he, the kind girl just came out of the Kaddish Kaddish and everybody's machab. He's like, oh, from the pickle. He's like in heaven and Shemayim. So it was a funny video and it became like a meme and people started doing it and people started sending videos. Uh, I saw a video of like some janitor in a school going crap. Yeah. Right, right. It's it went cra it went crazy. So yeah. I came along. And said uh, maybe there's something meaningful behind it. Meaningful over oh, here. There's something meaningful. <laughs> and the shot is. Is that when Jews start doing something, it can't be random, <laughs> right? I mean, Rav Tzadik has a tire. Rav Tzadik has a tire when we we call Yamtiv. What's Yamtiv? A good day or a holiday? Yeah, but you look, you look in Chazal, uh, Sukkah is called Chag, Atzeres. Mm. It's festival. Um, who coined the term Yamtiv? 
I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, question uh, is Yantif or Yamtif? Yamtif, <laughs> right? <laughs> so so Rav Tzadik had Rav Tzadik had the whole tire that when when you didn't start doing something, there was uh, the Abish that orchestrated that and this needed to be. People don't even realize why there's randomly men hugging that come out or different things. Anyways, I don't know if you could say it over here, but when you Jews start doing the krach on the pickle, so I timed it that the way you thank Hashem. And then people started sending me tire on it. It was Gavaldic. <laughs> the way we thank Hashem, we don't just thank Hashem for the pickle itself. You could, right? You say, thank you, Hashem, you created a pickle. But not only did you create a pickle, it's green. <laughs> it has a krach. Imagine a mushy pickle. <laughs> you don't need a mushy pickle. No, a krach on the pickle. Right? An apple. Like it's a squash. A mushy pickle is like a squash, no? <laughs> it's like a so we thank Hashem down to the finest details. I have the crack from the pickle. You know, what we're teaching Kleinstrol is that the way we thank Hashem is not only the pickle itself, but it's the, the detail that God put into the pickle that made it so attractive and delicious. Mm. We appreciate those things because those really express the Ahava. I'll tell you, Toisvis. Toisvis. Toisvis and Brachas, Ketan Mavarchim. Is Mafarish, Burn of Fashas Rabbis, Vichasreinon. Burn of Fashas Rabbis. Hashem created a lot of people. Viches and everything they need. So let's say the body needs uh, protein. <laughs> we have some chicken. Let's say the body needs vitamin, whatever. So you have this, uh, whatever it is. So Rabbi, Bayer of Ashes, Rabbi's Viches everything they need. Al Kol Masha Barasa is a whole different thing. Al Kol Masha Barasa is all the things that Hashem created that you don't even need. It's just there because I love you. So it says, for example, an apple. <laughs> I'm not the scientists are going to like this, but Tyson seems to say that an apple is unnecessary other than Hashem's love. He created a beautiful apple. The color looks good. It's delicious. What do I need it for? You don't. I gave you everything you need for your nutrients, but not only did I give you that, I give you a color, the color of the flowers. The world could have been a dull place, but they should add a detail. Ah, what a part. <laughs> Out of Ahava. So that's the krach on the pickle. The krach on the pickle represents us appreciating, thanking Hashem down to the finest detail because that expresses the Ahava. I, I, want to, that. I wanted to ask you, you really piggybacking on this, this part, most of your songs, I say most, a lot of your songs, make up a stat, 96% of your songs, I feel like you, you made up based off an experience like you went to on a trip with a big owners yeshiva to you know to poland and you're in concentration camps or you're visiting uh kivar tzadikim and you know your songs are just made up on the spot with with the guys and then you're just put onto your album and it's and it goes yeah it's not you know rarely i feel like you're sitting there writing a song no i don't i never so, write so like how, how do you how do you live your life so open to any moment can turn into a niggin, can turn into chizak for thousands of people. That's what happens. Last night I wrote a niggin. I sat around with a few chavra after it was a big fabrenger. Sat around with a few chavra in honor of the Basayan's yard site. Mm -hmm. Basayan was a big tzadik with kobo from Swas. And we sat around with a few chavra and we were just feeling the vibes. I wrote a niggin. Tzadikim b'misasam kruim chayim. And the hyper was Haley get Sadiqim on a right similar stabic by him. You, do you, have you sang it anywhere besides Just your last, last night? night yeah. So I, I, I probably I don't even remember. I have to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 you know, I'll listen to it. But, but you're right. From a, from a matzah. From matzah. I've tried. I'll be honest with you. I've tried. I said, you know what? All these composers, I'm going to sit down. I took a guitar, I wrote a note to them. Horrible songs. <laughs> 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 they never come out good. There's there are Jews that have talent that they're able to do that. I don't have that talent. I'm able to write a nigga and it just happens. Like you asked the chaver that we're sitting around last night. The whole song is written in 30 seconds. I don't. There's no cheshbon. This that. This, right. that. It's authentic. It's coming from from. Afterwards, I might work on it, tweak right. this, but it's Donnie's job. Yeah, brother Donnie over there. <laughs> hey, look at brother Donnie. Brother Donnie's deep. Yeah. Is, well, Rav Joey, is there a mitzvah that you connect with a little more than all the other mitzvahs? Or is it a little more dear to your heart? Rabada. We spoke about this, Rav Yankov. <laughs> well, the only one that doesn't know, me and Rav Yankov had a deep schmooze. <laughs> <laughs> it's we, pretty late. It's well, pretty late at night. It was I, 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 all I know is on the chat, and I saw Yaakov wanted to speak to you at one night, and then you responded like, after midnight, is <laughs> now good. <laughs> right. Right. Rabbi Yaakov thought he was going to call just to say what time am I coming. We ended up talking tired. Yeah, that's very good. But I would say Hanukkah, Neiris. <sighs> Month of miracles, baby. <laughs> yeah. So you think I've said that now because it's before Hanukkah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if you would have asked me on Sukkot, I might have also said Hanukkah. Actually, maybe not. Talk about it. Yeah, maybe, oh, really? I, maybe I would have said Lulav and Esther on Sukkot. You know what Karl said? What Karl said, you know what's special about us, Eden? 
Wherever, whatever we're in, we know that that's the greatest. <laughs> yes, on Sukkot, Sukkot is like unbelievable. Yeah. Pesach, Pesach is the best one. Shavuos, <laughs> Shavuos, Shavuos, is the Shavuos, best. Shavuos is the best. <laughs> and you know what? It's true. They're all the best because that guy says, "Oh, your heart is the most important. No, your brain, right? your brain, your eyes. And every everything is a chelik of everything is the best. Because without one of these chalakim of Yiddishkeit, we're missing a, a massive peak. So every it's all the best." Which mitzvah you connect to? They're all the best, but uh, Hanukkah. <laughs> because Hanukkah is 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 mamish the hiskalis of of everything of what's going on. Hanukkah is dark. The mitzvah is at night. Shabbos is the short, right? It's the earliest Shabbos in Hanukkah, right? Mm -hmm. Shki is what? I don't even know what Shki is. Early. Four ten. What? Four ten? No. Shki was like four twenty eight, I think. Yeah. No, nah, that makes sense. I should know this better. <laughs> I apologize to Olam. I'm not too much. So Hanukkah, lighting light the, light the menorah. That's, but that's your... Lighting the menorah. It's the darkest the, time of the year. Right? The days are the shortest. It's the darkest time of the whole year. It's cold. The trees are bare. <laughs> the mitzvah's at night. A little nearest. Mm. Hey, like a nearest in the darkest month. At night, when it's the darkest time. That's when the nearest come out. You know, this is Karav Hashem Lanesh Berei Leiv. I'll tell you, Taira. I can, I love Hanukkah. Is Hanukkah is, is forget it. It's nice, a warm feeling. Best the jelly donut. Best tickle tires, huh? What? Hanukkah is the best tires. The best tires on Hanukkah. And by, and by the way, by the Hasidim, by the great Hasidic masters, <laughs> the biggest svarim on Hanukkah, the most arichas is Hanukkah. Hanukkah is, is everything. Hanukkah, Rav Hutner writes, Hanukkah is our bridge from Galus to Mashiach. It was the last yontiv. Mm -hmm. The last yontiv means that that was the thing God said, okay, they got the Hanukkah, they're good to go until Mashiach. <laughs> well, what's up, Shach? Because Hanukkah is, 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 is the whole Indian of, of, the, of, the, of the neshama shining through all the garbage. Mm. The little pach shem and the little hidden pach shem, the little ner, the little piece inside. You know, mm. Hanukkah, you just stare at the nearest. Sometimes you, you, a guy, will, you know, you look at a Jew, you stare, what's wrong with this guy? A few months ago, he was walking around shaking a branch. Now he's sitting by a by a lamp with with fires, going on, staring at it. Like <laughs> you think these people are mashuga, but it's not. It's not. What, what that's you, why we're, we're that's why we're successful through brokenness because we connect so deep that in Yadav. <laughs> what do you do, Hanaga? You sit there and just stare at the, the stare at the nearest until I have to go. <laughs> you know, Rosh Hashem is uh, people make you know Hanukkah parties. Yeah. We'll see what happens this year. But. Right, but um. Uh, <laughs> But it's a, by the way, you're probably going to bring this up, like, over oh, your family time and stuff like that, and how do you cope with that and stuff. We'll get there, but, but uh, you know, at least until this year, who knows what happens this year, but until this year, Hanukkah is usually very booked up. Okay. Oh, Hashem, thank yeah. you, Hashem, Mamish. And people want to, if I bring a Hanukkah party. So usually I end up lighting, I sit there for a half hour, I tell anybody that I can't be there until whatever. At least for a half hour, I could sit there and stare at the thing and eat a jelly donut and <laughs> spin a dreidel, you know. So how do you uh, how do you balance the, <laughs> the family time with the gigs? Oh, there we go. You were telling us that last night specifically. You were you had a gig until like three a.m. Yeah. So, like, I'm sure that happens a lot. And yeah. So this is this is I believe that this is the answer for all the chaver out there that are wondering all oh, the singers. I would say like this: every single um, uh, what's the word? Uh, not position. Every single uh, job. Every single uh, what's the word? Job, job is occupation. A good word. Occupation. Oh, but a word of Nachi over there. Every single occupation will have with it a nesayin that you have to figure out how to make that. How to how to manage that nesayin. Hmm. What's a manager? We're all managers. That's what we are. What's a manager? You manage a team. If you would say, it's not good to be an accountant. You know why? Because Sukkot and Pesach is a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> right? Pesach, you have tax season. Sukkot, I think, is the corporate tax uh, deadline. If you're really successful, you got Sukkot also as a disaster. Yeah, Sukkot. Right, right, yeah, yeah, Sukkot. <laughs> My shver is an accountant. That's how I know these things. <laughs> otherwise, yeah, otherwise, I wouldn't know Pesach is not a good time, huh? No, Pesach is a, it's a nebuch, like It's right in the middle. Sometimes. Right. And, sometimes and, it comes out good. Sometimes but, it's right but in the middle, so then you're nervous with that. And then when it's not in the middle, sometimes it ends before, but then you show up wiped because these accountants right. don't sleep a whole April. Yeah. 
right? So you tell the accountant, it's not that to be an accountant. No, you, they, you have to be an accountant. You f- you'll figure out the management of how to do that correctly. Mm-hmm. You tell a guy, you shouldn't be a doctor to see Cyrus all the time. No, you should be a doctor. You're a doctor. You're meant to be a doctor, right? So you'll figure out how to manage with Tyron, with Chachma, how to be a doctor and live with that Nesayan. So the singer, you go out, family time. You have to figure out with Chachma, the Mahalach, on how to, how to pull it off. If it means that I won't book more than this amount of Shabbosim, if it means only once a month I'll go away for Shabbos, you come up with Cheshbonus. If, if it means that one night of Hanukkah is for the family, if it means that after a busy season we're gonna we're gonna go away and spend just quality, whatever it means, there's ways to do it. B'chachma. But a big nakuda, by the way, it's it's so important to be aware, aware. What am I saying? This summer, Bar Hashem, was a very very busy summer for me, because everybody was like it was like in between. Like the first wave was pretty much right, yeah. not around anymore, and nobody was sure if it's gonna come back again. So everybody just wanted to like break out. Breathe. And, if I bring and right. party and you know and you know some chaver did it right some chaver did it also right <laughs> <laughs> to each their own I don't judge anybody but I but Baruch Hashem every single night of the summer from the beginning of the summer Torah Shchadish Elul every single night I was booked wow I did not book a single Shabbos Shabbos for the Mishpacha but but so you say but okay but still the week you, you're not you just yeah. gone for two months not two months six weeks you're gone for six weeks the Teretz is Pasha. What we schmoozed before the summer, me and my wife, my kids are young, I'm not going to, you know, but my, 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 my wife schmoozed before the summer saying, get ready this summer. <laughs> I'm not around. After the summer, we're going to go away for a week and we'll spend quality time. And when you go in expecting it, mm. you're okay. Right. When you go into the summer, you're like, oh my God, I don't have a husband. Like When, when it comes upon you and you weren't ready for it, it's so important to be ready. It's so important to be aware. Uh, what am I going on a rant over here? No, I what I'm you. saying is, is that a, a, everybody in their own life will have things that they have to manage. Just plan accordingly. And plan accordingly. And work with Chachma and you'll manage those things. So the singer has his Indian. The accountant has his Indian. The Rebbe has his Indian. Right. Was it like, I mean, for, for performers, for musicians, especially during COVID, it must have been crazy, scary. Because that, that, so that profession was completely wiped out. Of course, because everything is about crowds. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. It was. It was interesting. I was. We, we had. <laughs> should, should we say exact details? Go for it. I had a uh, um, Pesach booked in Orlando. I was going to go on a villa program. Now I, I love all Jews, but and I respect everybody. My wife has an opinion that she won't go to a hotel. She'll, but she will go to a to a, a villa because it's at least we'll have private seders and whatever right. everybody does their own thing and mm-hmm. i love everybody but my wife's opinion so this worked out for us so we were going to go there and then a Cholomoyed, there was six concerts planned and like nice size concerts in orlando or all and over. these are going to be my first concerts i'll be honest with you yeah yeah, yeah but you can come in you can sit on the chair oh, sorry <laughs> And, and these are like my first, like my album had come out and people were getting into it. And, you know, until this point I was doing like little fabrangans and backyard parties. Like these, these were going to be like, like actual concerts, like real stuff. And everything was, everything was canceled. We ended up last minute cleaning the whole house and staying home for Pesach. Wow. And, uh, and Baruch Hashem, you know what? It was such a simcha of Pesach. We fabranged hard by the Seder, you know, because it's, you know. Love to when things work out easy. That's where simcha comes from. Mm. It's usually where things don't work out easy. That's where real simcha comes from. Mm. But uh, yeah, it was tough. And then Zoom started happening. You yeah. know, I I did Zoom concerts through COVID. I had COVID. I have to pour them. Oh gosh. To so be Megal to the Oilam. Everybody, anybody's worried if I ever go somewhere. <laughs> I had COVID. I have to pour them. I was Yoytzezan. I tested. I have Pla- antibodies. Pla- platinum antibodies. Platinum level antibodies. <laughs> I have tons of antibodies because I had it. I had it hard. The two weeks, it was. I had every symptom on the checklist: no taste, no <laughs> smell. I lost a ton of weight, achiness, fever, headaches, everything. The whole the ganza the ganza checklist. Right. And I had a lot of antibodies. I retested for antibodies. I tested for COVID a bunch of times throughout. Every time I got a cold, I'm like, oh no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Baruch Hashem is always negative. Kitsa, I remember doing Zoom concerts through 
<laughs> COVID. I remember sitting there schwitzing and schwitzing and schwitzing. Different bar mitzvahs, different things, and like uh, logging on the Zoom. You had to, <laughs> had to get this piece so that the audio should come out clear. And we played and played and schwitzing. Mama schwitzing. Yeah, schwitzing, you had to schwitzing. do it. You mean, like, you just had to do it. You have to do it. You got to do what you got to do. There was one day where, where, where I did, I just sat in my basement, and one after another, there was like five different things. Log I Emery, I did 12 events. Wow. All Zoom? Two I know, I was weren't. stuck in traffic on, in Frockway behind one of these vans where you're in the back of just yeah, was Cholomite Pesach, jamming yeah. away. <laughs> so Nahi's going to ask you a question about yeah, someone so, in history and then we're going to do a niggin. And then... Givaldic. So if you could sit down with someone from history who's no longer alive for one hour, just schmooze with them, sing with them, chill with them, who would it be? Who's no longer alive? Yeah. Davra Malch. Easy. That's quick. You would sing with him? You would talk to him? What, yeah, what because you... I could sing with him. He was clearly a musician, right? <laughs> He's a good composer also. He could talk to him. He probably was the most relatable person in the world, the, the stuff that he dealt, dealt with. Mm. He loved Hashem. I mean, all the tzaddikim. I right, 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 right. <laughs> Avram Vino, not as much, but David. No, he ma- I know. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that there's a certain like vibe that you get when you mm. learn about David Amala's life. You're crazy. And he stuck with Hashem. No matter what came in his way, he's stuck with Hashem and Muna and Muna and Muna and Muna. If you, um, if you can speak to any kid, teenager, older doesn't matter, who, let's say, was kicked out of their fair share of places, <laughs> and they're they're a little bit, you know, doubting their path. I heard of such an Indian. There. <laughs> what, would you, what, would you say, what would you say to them? Just talking straight to them. What do you mean they're doubting their path? What is it? They're unsure. They're uh, they've been rejected. Nah. It's a problem. It's a problem when people are rejected. First of all, everybody has to know that God never rejects anybody. This is the Indian of chopped. Nobody's ever chopped. <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as rejection from God. So you're with Hashem all, all the time, regardless. Regardless of the situation. I think people just have to know that 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 specific situations in their life. I'm not, I'm not going to say, somebody's going to say, what do you mean, Pierce has to be responsible for his actions? Of course you have to be responsible for your actions. Everybody knows that. Of course, if somebody did something wrong, and that's why he got thrown out. So maybe let let's say my opinion was he shouldn't have got thrown out, but it still means that he thinks about what he does and he tries to fix it, right? But Lamaisa, Lamaisa, I'm not into rejection. I don't think that we there's no reject e- eject. There's no eject button in Yiddish guy. You're Makarov. This is the Svasemis. If you need to, and there's a specific situation where whatever, it's not my business. Ask the Paiskim, ask the Tzadikim. <laughs> but be Makarov. <laughs> Bring somebody close. And for the, the for the kid himself, the one who's Oh, for the kid himself, for the kid himself, I think that people have to know that it, let, let's say let's say a kid had a bad experience. Now oh, oh, we, we're, let, we're, let's assume that, that that it was wrong that the kid was rejected, right? Okay. Is that the assumption right now? Sure. So let's say you go apple picking. And you get a bunch of beautiful apples and there's one you pick off and you're like it was like mushy and sour. The guy says the whole tree is a lousy tree. No, it's one bad apple. Yeah, you know? the tree's good. There's tons of good apples. People should know not to let not to let these experiences win them, not to let these rejections win. You be the winner. So the apple are the moments, and the tree, the whole tree is. Them. There are sour apples. There's, but your life is beautiful. There are sour apples, whether it's bad experiences that happen or whether it's people that threw you out for let's say not the right reason or people that rejected you let's say that's a sour apple don't reject don't don't get, get rid of the whole tree because mm. even the apple with the color is created <laughs> oh, the apple. It you, you you don't do, win don't be a winner don't let those things win you over and remember always that you're gavaldic and you're in a shama and you're a chalik alikami mal that Hashem loves you to pieces. <laughs> and if they were thrown out because they're they're supposed to be, because they went all still, still, it's the same. Maybe Hashem loves you to pieces. I, I don't know how to take out your guitar, so I don't want to mess something. Oh, here's up my over guitar. Here. But could I, I don't know. I, I was thrown like, out for the right reason, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna, you but I but I didn't let it get to me. Uh, okay, so things happen. But listen to this thing. It goes like this. And this is what everybody has to hear, because everyone has to realize that there are Chelik Alikami Mal. This song is written by Ali Malik Bloomstein. And Bez Hashem, it's going to come out at some point. The high part goes like this. 
חלק אלוהי קו הממה חלק אלוהי קו הממה חלק אלוהי קו הממה אבוי ממה that's the high part of that name but listen to this one right but this one are we going on a, on a comes it's rant right now let's do it goes like this I don't even know if I like it yet but I wrote this <laughs> sitting on my couch I was like this you hear him knock over there <laughs> Hello, It's interesting, I usually don't write like this. Now here it goes. The light in the dark, the little old spark in every year. No matter how far, wherever you are, you're still a year. The light in the dark, the little old spark in every year. Ha negiroi salolu koi de shay. Nachi chorus! The meaningful minute, the Ooh. meaningful minute changed your life. Did it change your life? Of course. <laughs> Just takes a minute. Give me something, give me something. Nachi, meaningful minute, your thing, meaningful minute, our thing. Sometimes it takes a minute to bring out holy light. Ooh. <laughs> the light in the dark, the little old spark in every year. Rabbi Joey, thank you for letting us get to know you better. Hashem should bless you to keep on spreading light, Mamish. Meaningful minute. But but by the way, the Indian of the Neris is a little Pach So what you're tying is that even the one little minute, Ah. the one little minute is the Indian of a little Pach one minute. And the hour and 20 minutes. I mean, this was an hour and 20 minutes. This is an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> this is a mamish. This is a big avoid. But, but listen, what could I say? The island is spreading light. Hashem should bless you. Continue that slacha. To be able to keep on spreading in Yonim. And Zeu. Uh, Hashem should bless the island with a freilich in Hanukkah and a freilich in year. That this year, I don't know if you heard the album. That this year we should be zeicha to say. A freilich in Tishabal, a lichte get Tishabal. This year should be Zaycher to say, I get in Tisha B'Av. Amen. Ah, what a breath of fresh air this guy is. Joey Newcomb. That was a what very a funny like, sentence. What a breath of fresh air. This guy is. Like, this guy I feel is. like in the diction, like in the... Persistency, Yako, persistency. The English. It's a real word. And his, his, his voice is golden. And he can play the guitar really nice. Great voice, even greater heart. Huh? Wow, that was romantic. Yeah. Yeah, Joey, that was beautiful. You know what's interesting? He's so far to date our youngest guest. He's only 30 years old. No, that's that's like right? so unexpected. I thought he was, uh, it's not, I don't think he's older because he looks older, but I just, you know, we, I don't know. I just didn't think he was that young. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, I thought 35. Very well traveled, 40. you know, but 
an incredible episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a review. You can listen to us on, you can watch on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Meaningful Minute app, wherever you hear your podcast, we are there. And of course, leave a review because that helps more people listen. Yeah. And Yaakov, what do we got coming up soon? We got coming up. Okay, so this has been season one. We're going to go by years. 2020 has been season one. It's a heck of a ride. And uh, coming up, we have something really, really cool. Uh, Nahi and I, there's so much behind the scenes that have gone on in these 30 plus episodes. We're going to dig into moments that we want to hone in on, moments that we couldn't even say on camera. There's a little behind the scenes stuff that happened right after the episode, the lives that it changed people's. That's a poor sentence. <laughs> it's going to be a year in review of all these episodes. Some things you didn't know. Some things you really are going to be excited to hear. So guys, make sure to look out for that coming soon. As you near the end of season one, we appreciate and we love all the support that you give us. And you're making us the number one Jewish podcast in the entire world. Thank you, guys. So thank you. Thank you. Ah, there we go. Haida. Haida. Thank you, Hashem. And thank you. Ciao.